So Cubase has quick controls. Now, if you're not using them, you're missing out. They'll save you a whole bunch of time. And not only that, they'll make the entire music making process start to finish, loads more hands-on, loads more tactile, and loads more fun. Now, I reckon I spend about 20 to 40 hours in Cubase per week, most of the time just noodling around. And easily, the feature that I use the most out of the billions of things that Cubase has on offer are the quick controls. Yeah, they don't look very exciting or sexy, but that's okay because they really don't need to because what they are are instant and effortless. Quick. So quick, they put it in the name. And time saved messing about equates to time gained, having fun, making music, which is why you're here. So today I'm going to show you how I use quick controls from the moment that I add a new instrument into a track right the way through to the final mixing process. Literally, there's not a minute of my Cubase time goes by when I'm not using quick controls. They are almost perfect. So let's have a look at how to set them up, how to personalize them to your own specific workflow, and then I'll finish up with some future feature requests on the off chance that anyone from the Steinberg development team happened upon this video. And if anyone from the Steinberg development team is watching this, just know that I love you guys so much. You make my life awesome. So quick controls are basically the macro controls of Cubase. Most people watching this will have a favorite VST that has built-in macro controls like the Halion SE version that comes bundled with Cubase or the plugin that most everyone seems to own, Serum. And the function of macro controls are that they provide instant access to the most useful parameters in the preset that you got loaded up. And the Cubase quick controls provide this for any function within Cubase or third-party effect that can be automated. And the reason that I love them so much is that they take Cubase out of the computer and into the real world. For me, and I guess most of you out there, music is a very tactile process. For example, I just got this pad controller, the Aura by Nectar. And by the way, a big up to my man Jay for managing to get this thing to me here in Hong Kong from Germany in the middle of a pandemic. Love you, brother. Now the Aura allows you to choose up to 5,000 different levels of sensitivity for each pad. So that means that I can just stroke them if I'm feeling chill. Or bang them if I'm not. And when you're using something so tactile, the feeling of playing a sound is just as important as the sound that is being played. Now, I don't really care for what is technically correct. That's for the world of mix engineers. What I care about is the way that the feeling of a sound changes as you play about with the pots on an EQ. And for reasons that I can't really put into words, I can feel what an EQ is doing much more when I'm using it like this than I can when I'm using it like this. So to make the most of quick controls, you need a MIDI controller with eight sliders or eight pots or both. So before I show you how I use them, let's have a look at how to set them up. Go to Studio Setup, track quick controls, hit Learn, click in the first box, Move the control on your controller that you want to be associated with Quick Controls 1. Then click in the second box and move your second controller. And so on and so forth. To check if they're working, load up an instrument or an audio channel. Open up your Quick Controls. Load up the first preset which is linked to Cubase's channel strip. And now you should have access to these parameters from your MIDI controller. To change the parameter that a quick control is linked to, hit the L button, click on the parameter you want to control, and that's job done. Now, once you get into the habit of using quick controls habitually, they will speed up your workflow by about a million percent right from the inception of an idea, all the way through to putting the final touches on a mix down. So let me show you. Gain staging. So whenever you insert a new virtual instrument, it will be loud. 
always. So the first thing you're always going to need to do is reduce the output gain on that virtual instrument for three reasons. One, the sum volume of multiple loud instruments means that you're going to clip your master output, even if you aren't clipping each individual channel. Two, if you're going to be adding insert effects to your instrument, the last thing you want to be doing is clipping them on the way in or out. Because in a DAW, clipping leads to digital distortion, which sounds good never, and you really don't want that digital distortion enhanced or magnified by any insert effect. And three, controlling the level of an instrument at the source gives you loads more control over the overall output than using the channel fader will. So the first thing that I do when I load up an instrument onto a track is load up this quick controls preset that I've called Tutorialism QC. And slot one in this preset is linked to the pre-gain in the channel strip. So it doesn't matter what instrument I'm using, in effect, the master gain will always be this dial on my controller. So once you've got a preset set up that you're happy with, you can click here and save it. And I also use this preset on all audio and group channels. Insert effects. Now I don't have presets set up for every insert effect that I use. The reason for that is you can't create folders inside your preset list. And even if you could, trying to find the right preset for the right plugin and a never ending list would just be annoying and time consuming. So it's just much quicker to learn the controls for each plugin as and when you use it. So two seconds and I've got an LA2A. Quick. Modulation. So it's the same thought process for user modulation as it is for insert effects. Just set them up as and when you need them. But the advantage of using quick controls for your modulation is that you have a nice handy list of all the parameters that you've got modulated saved within each project. Creating a personalized mixing environment. So this is where I want you to think about your own personal process is I show you mine. Right now, I'm in love with this channel strip, the Lindell 50. It has a preamp section, which you can use to add a nice bit of saturation if you drive it hard, an EQ, a compressor, a gate, and a master out. I typically load up this plugin as the first insert on every channel I add. So after I've used my default preset to set the initial gain so that I'm not distorting on my way into the channel strip, I load up this preset, which gives me access to the preamp, so I can add color if I want. The compressor, so I can balance the dynamics. And the output, so I can either gain stage into the next insert, or if I'm not adding any other effects, just use it to set the level on the channel. So basically, this preset on this channel strip is just a level up on my gain staging preset in my tutorialism quick controls, only with added control and added flavor. Now, the second preset I have for this particular plugin is for the EQ. Now, it took me forever to find this EQ. An EQ with eight controls. Most EQs have way more or way less than eight but eight is the perfect amount because eight is the amount of controls we tend to have on the standard MIDI controller, and eight is the number of controls in our quick controls. So an EQ with eight controls is perfect. This means that I don't even have to have the plugin open. I can just know that on my controller, I've got the lowest frequencies on the left, the highest to the right, the bottom row are all gains, and the top row are all frequency. With the added bonus that this controller the P1 by Nectar will actually show me the frequency and the gain amount on this little TFT screen here. And there's just something about this workflow that makes this channel strip feel like a real piece of hardware kit right here at my fingertips whenever I want. Okay, so now it's time for the super obnoxious YouTuber to act like it's super simple to write code and program software and act like I can do a better job than Steinberg, but Trust me, that's not what I'm saying at all. So just hear me out because I feel like what I'm about to say would be super simple to implement and would also help elevate the quick controls just to that next level. So yeah, if anyone from Steinberg's watching, just 
please consider what I'm about to say. So basically I have two ways in which I think the quick controls could be improved upon and they're both kind of related. Now the first one seems obvious to me, but if you could just allow us to map more than one parameter to each quick controls, that would be awesome. And the second one would be to allow us to set a minimum and maximum amount for the parameter that each quick control is linked to. So with those two things, a single quick control could be attached to the attack and the decay of a synth at the same time as the dry wet on a reverb using the minimum and maximum amount value so that the reverb is never fully wet or fully dry. And we could also have that same quick control mapped to a gain control, which has its minimum and maximum amounts inverted. So we could reduce the overall gain of the sound as more reverb is added to the signal. Times that by eight quick controls and the possibilities could be endless. Right, so that's my ode to quick controls. Now I will put a link in the description below to all of the equipment that I use. So if you want to check any of it out and you're thinking about buying it, use the link in the description. It won't cost you anything extra and it will be helping out the channel. Now, if there's any topics that I've mentioned in this video that you'd like to see me dive into in further detail, let me know in the comments below. But as always, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Now go make music. Peace.